Now, let's dive into the Manage section of the platform. This is likely where most admins will spend their time reviewing activity and keeping tabs on the operation, and where pilots can do a little more extensive flight planning as well. In this first snippet, we're going to cover user management, roles and permissions, and workflows. Let's begin by heading down underneath the admin section and jumping into users. Here we'll be presented with a list of users on our account. We can see some of their data coming through, such as 107, flight hours, etc. If we need to edit any of these users, you can simply click, the side panel will open, and then we can click the edit button to adjust any of these details. If we need to invite additional users, as long as we have the permission to do so, you'll see the Add User button in the top right. From there, we only need to give first name, last name, email, and then assign a role to send that invite out. Last but not least, we can also retire users. So we can select users that are no longer flying for us. And then using the Apply Action feature in the menu above, we can bulk retire users as needed. Retiring the user will revoke their access from the platform, but allow us to keep flight logs and all the associated records attached to those flight logs. As mentioned, when you invite users, you'll assign them to a role. And here we can see our users broken down with that role. So let's head over into roles and permissions to take a look. So here we have some different examples set up the primary admin role is going to exist on every account, and this is immutable, meaning that we cannot change any of those permission settings for the highest level of that admin role. However, we can add additional roles and limit those capabilities. So we can set up a role for our pilots, but then give a role for our operations managers or chief pilots and give them a little bit more higher visibility or flexibility in editing aircraft or other users' information. Aside from setting permissions and access levels, you'll see the role also has a workflow assigned with it. So in this case, this is going to be that role's primary workflow. So their day-to-day -day operations are generally going to be covered by that workflow. However, we do also have the opportunity to customize that workflow within specific missions. Now that we understand the connection between workflows and roles, let's take a look at those workflows. Taking a look at the workflow section, you'll see we have a few other options in here. So workflows can be customized for different purposes. Depending on the account, workflows might be customized for pilot experience, it might be customized for the type of aircraft we're flying, or it could be tailored to our specific use case and how we're using that drone. Potentially, we have a separate workflow just for night flights. So depending on your operations could really affect what these workflows look like, but overall, the best approach is to keep things as simple as possible. So let's take a look at the default workflow that's been assigned to the roles on our account. In this case, we have a few steps that are assigned to our users. It starts out by having the user choose their mission, then conduct a pre-flight checklist, followed by a risk assessment. And lastly, after they fly and complete their flight logs, they'll be presented with a post-flight checklist as well. You'll also see that the workflows have the ability to mark things as optional or required. So when you edit this workflow, it's very easy to add steps in between. We could rearrange items as necessary and then mark certain things required or optional. If things are marked required in the workflow, the pilot will not be allowed to continue logging their information in the app until they complete that step. There's a lot of opportunity and customization with workflows, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our team and we can better assist you.